Welcome to the Practice You podcast. My name is Elena Brower. Together, we'll explore and enjoy content and conversations around mastering transitions. In our relations, our wellness, our careers, our families, and especially in our missions and visions. You are invited to learn and love and listen with me. Welcome to Practice You. Welcome back to the podcast. I have the very distinct pleasure today of inviting and welcoming Jade Shoots. She is one of the foremost aromatherapy teachers in this land. She has had a huge influence on me and she will be having a huge influence on many of you soon. She holds a diploma in holistic aromatherapy, holistic massage, anatomy and physiology, and reflexology from the Raworth College of Natural Medicine in Dorking, UK. She has a diploma in aromatherapy from the International Therapist Examining Board, and today she is the visionary and director of education at the School of Aromatic Studies in New York City. Uh, I am so happy and honored to have you here. We are finally, after a long promise, collaborating (laughs) on a course, which is awesome. I'm going to be sharing your sort of flagship uh, aromatherapy course with not only my team, but also the larger community that is doTERRA. We are 8 million strong now. My team is 32,000 strong. Um, it's really such a privilege. You are recognized as one of the vanguard of professionals who has helped to introduce aromatherapy to the U S and you are playing a very active role in the setting of the standards for aromatherapy education in North America. So it's a great privilege. Um, tell us a little bit about your history, how you got to this place, and then we can start to launch into a little bit of the coursework and, and how the, the aromatherapy works. Right. Thank you. Yes. So um, my story is a long one, but how I got exposed originally to essential oils, um, I had graduated with a bachelor's in accounting. And I'll never forget, this was in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, The man I was working with at the time, it was for a chain of restaurants. And I was in like the accounting department doing accounts receivable. And I'll never forget my boss, Patrick Buben said, you know, Jade, you do great work, but you really don't belong in in an accounting office. And I was like, I looked at him. I was like, don't I know that? Do you know? And thankfully, my last year of college, I was working for the restaurant, but also um, I was just about to leave to go to England on an exchange program where I went and lived and worked there for uh, six months. So it was that. So Patrick kind of letting me become aware of, I didn't belong in an accounting office. And I would often find myself staring out the window, like there has to be something more. And Mm. I've always had, you know, a deep connection with nature, but of course I just didn't know how to merge that passion with a path. So when I went to England, just to make a long story short, I eventually married a British man, Thomas Schutz, which is where my last name comes from. And it was during, um, the first year I was there, I developed health problems. And I think a lot of that was that I was living in a different country. My husband uh, was a musician. He was in LA recording an album. And there I found myself in this different country trying to, even though I loved it, um, to trying to find my place within that. So I did develop mostly like back issues. I was in a lot of pain. And a friend of mine recommended I go see her friend, Sophie, Um, who was an aromatherapist. And of course, you have to remember, this is like 1988, 89. So I was like, aroma, what? And there was Um, one aromatherapist in the whole country. Exactly, exactly. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll go have this aromatherapy treatment because I was quite desperate for help. So I went and, you know, in England, of course, the aromatherapy is a, a, a part of a 
part of it is with massage. So I had my first session with Sophie. She did her consultation with me. And then, you know, she gave me a massage. I fell asleep and it was in a beautiful location as well. We were south of London. We were in this beautiful property. It was like upstairs in this loft with, you know, skylight and the sun. It was a beautiful day in England. I had this aromatherapy treatment and I fell fast asleep. And then when I woke up, literally, this is the honest, you know, honest truth. The first thought I had was, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Wow. Um, I know, right? I was like, and sure enough, within about probably three months of that session, I was enrolled at the Rayworth Institute of Natural Medicine um, in Dorking, just south of London. And that pretty much began my my path. Um because I just found just with that, even that one session, the link between kind of the tension and emotional aspects of my pain really responded to the aromatics. Yeah. 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 It's interesting that it started out as a crucial aspect of massage therapy. Yes. I mean, that was very much the, the kind of English model, um, you know, when it, it kind of was derived from Marguerite Murray's work, who was really looking for a more holistic way to use the essential oils than, say, Gatfasse or Valnay, who used them more in clinical settings. Uh, Marguerite Murray was very much interested in kind of this more holistic approach and how can essential oils affect not only the human body, but also our emotions and well-being. So it, it's really the English model is built off of Marguerite Murray's concept that, um, you know, part of the beauty of aromatics is their potential to relieve stress and therefore support health just by alleviating some of the stress and tension in the body. So right. yeah, so very much the English approach had massage, reflexology, applied kinesiology, a lot of hands-on with our goal being to reduce the impact of stress on the body. I just want to let that sit for a moment. Yeah. Um, I'm looking now at the framework, shifting the paradigm on the aromaticstudies.com website. If you click on aromaticstudies.com and you click on method, if you want to put in the, the actual site, it's aromaticstudies.com forward slash aromatic dash studies dash method. You will find a triangle, a really helpful diagram that has at the base of the triangle, the heart, all one word, just heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, God, please. Yes. <laughs> Above the heart, we have the word terrain. And this is where I just fell in love with everything that you are about. Terrain includes diet, whole foods, lifestyle, exercise, herbs, as well as essential oils. Not one or the other. We will talk about this. Hydrosols, aromatherapy, gardening, soil, nutritional supplements, community, time and nature. That's the terrain. And that is when you have an acute symptom, that is the second place you go after acute intervention, all the way at the top of the triangle, you'll see it, acute intervention followed by building terrain and resiliency. Can you talk a little bit about how this came to pass, this diagram, and why it's so resonant, oh my goodness, for us right now? Absolutely. So, do you know, I was inspired, this diagram was, was inspired by a teacher of mine, uh, Thomas Easley of the Eclectic School. And, do you know, he introduced me to this first step of the heart, do you know, like having our heart be in the right place and be compassionate and understanding with ourselves and what we might be going through. So, he really, like, kind of inspired me to remember that that's really where it all begins and our love for ourselves, our family, our community, what we're doing in our life, um, all are a part of that. And then building up to terrain, I mean, terrain is really a part of that as well, like heart and terrain go together. Do you know, aromatherapy in some ways, when we first started practicing, we kind of lacked a fuller uh, perspective of just what goes into 
the body's health and well-being. And mm-hmm. so for me, of course, and for, for many of you, and I know for Elena, you know, the terrain is the most important. How are we supporting our body's health and well-being? And we can use essential oils to do that and all of these other um, activities or, or substances without necessarily going right into treating a disease state, sometimes even correcting little dietary changes or going out for a walk once a day is enough to avoid having to go to symptom relief or acute intervention because the body wants to achieve homeostasis or a sense of balance. You know, it's it's our innate um, physiology that we seek homeostasis balance within Mm -hmm. our body within our the health of our organism Um, and then you know and then if we kind of lose touch with that part the terrain which is easy to do in today's crazy old world um, you know Mm -hmm. we might get to that place where we need symptom relief or we need acute intervention and this is where again essential oils rock because they are so powerful um, to help us kind of address some of the maybe symptoms or some of the acute conditions going on that we might experience. So I think building off of the heart, Mm. self-compassion, self-love, and kind of expanding that out to the larger community, being aware of how are we supporting and honoring the terrain of our bodies and our mind right like even time in nature helps our bodies but helps our 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 psychological state as well without necessarily always going to oh we're going to relieve this first without thinking about oh it's because i haven't taken a walk in you know a month or Mm, whatever mm, mm. yeah i look at this and i think about some of the more uh acute symptoms that I've seen resolved with essential oils. And so I thought for those, you know, if you're listening to this and you've never had an experience of essential oils, let's say, think about the moment that any one of my male family members in my life, including myself, but the males in particular who just have no connection to the oils at all, when they have had a digestive upset and they get a little swipe of a blend that includes fennel and peppermint and anise caraway Mm. on their belly. And within moments, (laughs) perhaps a little TMI are (laughs) farting and feeling amazing. (laughs) Absolutely. These are the, (laughs) these are the moments that I think, okay, there's acute intervention Now we have to build the terrain and you go down to the terrain and you think, okay, what actually did you eat? You probably had some cow dairy that doesn't actually belong in our bodies. You probably had some other fried something and now your body is holding it in a way that it shouldn't because it doesn't belong there. And so we have to release it. How do we release it? The essential oils will always come to the rescue. And I wanted to, just sort of introduce the lay person to how that works, especially digestively, because it's something that's so rampant right now due to the fact that our soil is so demineralized. Right, right. Absolutely. Do you know, I have a funny story about fennel and digestive upsets with this woman. And farting. uh, And yeah, (laughs) and farting. No, this is more like eliminating. Oh, So, um, so she, I was living with her and she came home, she had acute digestive um, cramps. And I believe it was from excess gas and um, a little bit of constipation. And she told me, I'm going to go out to the mall in a few hours with my boyfriend. And I was like, okay, well, let me just put some fennel. I put fennel on her stomach. I gave her a little bit of reflexology. I gave her a fennel bath. And then, you know, she goes off. She comes back from the mall. She's like, Jade, you won't believe I spent the entire time in the bathroom. <laughs> I felt so bad, but I told her actually, I said, you, you know, you can have some elimination occurring. I don't know if you want to go shopping right now. And she was like, no, no, no. So they are very effective at that acute intervention. Like boom, it, it relieved the constipation, the gas, um, 
and she, you know, she felt so much better, even though she, she was sad that she didn't get to enjoy her experience shopping. Hilarious. But, 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 know, but a great example. It's exactly <laughs> what keeps happening. Um, there are so many other sort of systems of the body that are positively impacted by, uh, by the oils, but this is one of the ones that sort of everyone can identify with. Absolutely. <laughs> let's um. So, let's go yeah. back to uh, to that model, for example, uh, in the the framework. Where on the left side of that page, you talk about how important it is to stimulate and support the body's innate ability to heal. You encompass the whole person. You address the underlying cause. You see the aromatherapist as a teacher. You see a priority in prevention. And of course, obviously at the base of it, the Hippocratic Oath to do no harm. Um, I'd love to talk to you a little bit about the body's innate abilities to heal and how the oils address that. Okay. So um, one of the things we're going to be talking about is the, our, our aromatic medicine course, which takes kind of a more uh, energetic um perspective to the essential oils. So through that and just through the nature of essential oils themselves. I mean, essential oils are in a broad category of what we call um, amphrotetic, I believe is the word, or uh, balancing. They are by nature, they don't stimulate where stimulation is not needed, and they don't sedate where sedation is not needed. So they have this ability to help the body reach that place it wants to go to all the time, which is homeostasis, right. is balance. It's physiologically, all our systems are working at their optimal um, state. And so, you know, that's essential oils support the body in achieving that homeostasis. If it's too heavily stimulated, essential oils can calm and soothe the system. If it's too sedate, whether through an emotional state such as depression or constipation is a state of sluggishness, of stagnation. Mm -hmm. So by using the essential oils, we're supporting the body's innate desire to eliminate, right? We're not, we're not causing elimination to occur that's not supposed to. Um, we're, we're actually helping the body through the use of essential oils to do what it wants to do to maintain its health. Yeah. The, does, that, does that make sense? It makes I mean, perfect like, sense. And it reminds yeah. me of chemistry, which I weirdly <laughs> loved. The word I think that you're looking for is amphoteric. The A -M amphoteric. Amphoteric. A-M-P-H-O-T-E-R-I-C, -E if I remember correctly. And I think it's when, I have to look it up, but I think it's when uh, a compound that actually can function as both an acid or a base, if I remember. Yes. Is that true? Thank you. Yes. And it's a similar word you'll hear, um, adaptogenic. Right. You know, that's a, yes, that's yes, a, yes. another word. Yes. yes. Adaptogenic. Such a key word right now. My God. I know. So this is kind of where I am smitten with essential oils. It's why it's one of the reasons why I chose to create a business. Um, I chose doTERRA for certain reasons, other, other reasons, notably, the quality, the stringency of the testing, the the clarity of the mission when it comes to charity, when it comes to uh, integrous sourcing. But really, the functionality of the oils is what got me. And when I look around at people in my life who, without staking or making any medical claims whatsoever, I say this, that's my caveat. How about the many people who have been on any sort of prescription mood altering drugs for a long time, which I, by the way, am in full support of because I know that they work and they have worked for people that I love and I have every, every modicum of respect for Western medicine Absolutely. and for all the ways in which Western medicine has helped so many of my people with depression, anxiety, and all the things associated. But I have seen many cases where an oil such as copaiba or vetiver have mitigated and helped people to lessen their dosages of such drugs. And I, again, I say the word drugs with no judgment, I really swear, lessen their dosages, thereby 
helping the body find that homeostasis again by stopping taxing the liver, the kidneys, and all the organs that have to then process those pharmaceuticals. I, I would love for you to talk about the way that the oils mitigate conditions with the nervous system, just in a way that will help people understand that it really is true and there's no, there's no opinion either way. I think that there's a middle ground where both things can coexist and one can help the other. Absolutely. Absolutely. I am in full agreement with you. So do you know essential oils, it's interesting. Um, think about it. We've grown throughout our history as, as humans. We've grown up using aromatic plants. So there is a, a deep relationship that we have, even if we're not aware of it. And so I think when people begin using essential oils, it accesses a part of our mind and a part of our kind of spirit or psyche that remembers, not necessarily consciously, but somewhere in there we remember this deep relationship with the aromatic plants through the essential oils we're using. And I believe that there's something in that relationship that is able to shift um, perceptions and uh, emotions in a very subtle way towards a more positive uh, state. And, and I don't mean to say that on a simplistic level. I mean, health conditions can be incredibly complex. Yes. But, but by adding essential oils, we're like reawakening that relationship. That, that's what I'm beginning to see. I really think... You know, we've always used aromatic plants, but all of a sudden it's like, woo, everywhere. And I think the human psyche or the human uh, being today needs to be using their sense of smell, these amazingly uh, powerful aromatics, because they, they can alter perception enough to allow healing on whatever level that needs to take place or can take place within that person's life or whatever is, is the illness or the disease that's happening um, psychologically or physiologically, um, just it, they seem to provide some type of shift. And I think that's what you're really speaking to that, you know, it's not necessarily, well, I could go into the science and, you know, that affects these neurotransmitters and it helps with this, but I, I don't think that's, that's all of it. I think really we're getting down to, just we're regrowing and re-relating to things we've we know somehow in our in ourselves before we had to pay rent and before we had to yes. worry about relationships and before we had to worry about whether or not we got a good grade exactly. all i see are my little hands in my backyard and my mom is somewhere over to my right and she i'm in the way far corner and she is gardening and of course the thing that always comes up now when I think about all of this is the goddamn roundup. Yeah. That yeah. green bottle. Yeah. I'm sure mm -hmm. it killed her. Yeah. Good. Um, and I never felt comfortable touching it when she was working with it. I was always like, I don't want to touch that stuff. Good for you. But I, what I remember though, are my little hands like exploring a hydrangea with wonder and looking at how on God's green earth did it happen that there could be this ombre <laughs> on that leaf? What hell? How? <laughs> Can somebody please explain? And then the, the azalea bushes. Oh, my God. The colors that would come out of those things. And I think I took a lot of time. And now, 49 years old, however many years later, decades, I'm, I'm scaling my my time back and I'm spending more and more time in Central Park. I'm doing calls in Central Park where I'll just walk around and sort of like lean on a tree, hug a tree, sit under a tree, look at a tree, smell the tree. We were hiking in Boulder the other day and we were smelling the trees on um, Lion's Lair that smell like sarsaparilla. Mm. Oh, the sap, I can't even, it smells like root beer. Oh my gosh, uh, just like, amazing. Uh, just really enjoying the gifts of nature. And I feel like the oils 
as much as it is my core business now, it's my main source of income, but they have given me a reconnect to my love of plants and nature that I never expected would happen. Yeah. For that, I'm eternally grateful. Yeah. Your I course. See, yeah. Yes. Tell me, tell me. Tell I me. see that happen a lot. Do you know, I, I, that's one thing I, I'm very uh, appreciative of the essential oils because I do think they're a doorway into that type of reconnecting, do you know, and valuing um, the time that we do spend outdoors um, you know, I'm a big gardener and, you know, we just purchased 70 acres of land up in Virginia just just for that reason. I mean, my husband and I, when we were like, where are we going to retire? I'm like in nature with with trees. <laughs> I don't want to be in just a retirement community. I want to be with, you know, the plants and with the trees. And and that is what will feed my soul as I as I continue to grow older. Um, so I, I love that. And on our land up in Virginia, just recently, because you reminded me talking about the smells in the in the woods and the trees, we have a Virginia pine, which when you break it open, it smells like just like an orangey piney. It's the most beautiful. I call it tangerine pine, actually. Mm. Um, so I agree with you. It's it's those moments that yeah are just real special. Yeah, I I. I'm thankful every day for that. And now that I, you know, we have these little potent concentrations of the plants in my house. And I'm, I want to also talk before we get into the course and I have an agenda to talk about the differences between herbs and oils, because there are several people that I know who would dive into an herbology course and then immediately just stop using the oils entirely because there's an mm -hmm. entire school of thought that says that the oils are too potent I am of the belief that I use only one little drop at a time and see how that goes. I'm always diluting because I know the carrier oil actually fits in our cell receptors more accurately than, and for much more long time than the little mole, tiny molecules of the essential oils. I'd love to talk to you about how your, what, how you see that occurring and how do you teach respect for the potency of the oils? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, so, well, I personally think there's a place for both, for herbs and essential oils, and that one doesn't need to exclude the other. Um, you know, and I always think it's a bit of a tragedy if people turn away from the oils for whatever reasons, you know, because they are so um, valuable and I think important in the world hmm. today. Um, could you rephrase the question? So I for sure, I, I'm just you. interested in helping helping to clarify for people how the the study of herbs and the use of herbs can coexist with the study and the use of essential oils. I don't think one excludes the other. I'm exactly. feeling that very strongly. I have a whole collection of herbs in my house that I use to great effect. I mean, Chinese herbs, I use them all the time. I had get acupuncture once a week. So I'm, I'm constantly in my little brewing situation. So I think so. I agree. So there, there is a balance between, you know, there's a place for herbal medicine and, and I'm trained in both. So I'm a herbalist and an aromatherapist. And so I think both of them play a role um, in, in potentially helping or supporting our health and not to the exclusion of one or the other. But if you happen not to use herbs and you're just using essential oils, that would be okay too. Do you know, it's not a prerequisite, um, to use both. Um, I do, as I said, I think, you know, there's a place for both and essential oils. Some people I believe have reacted, uh, reacted more out of, the social media negativity that can happen with essential oils versus really their own inner uh, compass on that. So, right. Right. yeah. And, you know, for some people, it could be the truth that herbs in their subtlety are more appropriate for that system, for that person, for that individual. Absolutely. So, but again, the next question before we get into the meat of the course the respect for the potency of the essential oils. I'd love to talk about how you feel about that. I, like I said, I just am like the one drop girl, please don't pour 25 drops anywhere. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. Always dilute. And, you know, so teach me about that. 
So as we know, essential oils are very powerful. And so we don't need to use as much. And, it, you know, it's not like, you know, one drop would be equal to a cup of tea. But, you know, it's, it's I think, a balance between where do essential oils rock? Do you know, when do we really uh, want to turn to the use of essential oils in daily life? But always just remembering that they're very strong and that we don't need to use them in these incredible, you know, high dilutions. And I mean, there would be times that where it might be indicated. And as everyone knows who buys them, they're expensive. So they're expensive because of the sheer amount of plant material needed to produce, you know, a liter or whatever quantity is being produced. So it's, you know, cost effective. They're very potent. So we don't need to use as much anyways. Mm. Um, and they speak very deeply to the human body. I mean, they're just so amazingly effective. Mm. Um, I, d I do want to say like that, you know, there's a dance that we do with, you know, how much are we going to use? Uh, even a few days ago, I was responding to one of our students about migraines and, you know, having been a migraine sufferer, I often would get relief from using undiluted peppermint, like on the back of my neck and on my right. scalp and, you know, and it provided an immense relief and, you know, and yet out there it might be like, oh no, it's dangerous. It's not safe. But yet it, it is when you're doing it and you understand, okay, this is like, it's such an acute pain. Like I'm in agonizing pain that putting peppermint undiluted on my skin, because I also understand my skin and what I can handle was very effective. Right. So there would be times for some where we want to use a high dosage, but for the most part, using lower dilutions or smaller amounts or blending them down will be equally um, as beneficial. Our body responds to them, but the, you know, one drop exactly speaks volumes to our body and yeah. our mind. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, let's highlight the fact that our intuition is one of the most valuable resources we've got. For those of you who are working with the oils or thinking about working with the oils, one of the most important things I feel that I teach is don't do anything for three to six months regarding any business or income generating activities at all. Be in relation with the oils first. I have no interest in somebody growing a business based on no information, especially no intuitive information. So I, I feel like that's something to highlight. Let's talk about the course now. I do agree with you, Elena. I mean, even my own expansion as an aromatherapist has been um, trying things on myself or my son or my husband, right. who are always thankfully willing participants, because even sometimes I'm like, will this actually work? And so I'm like, okay, well, let's try it. Do you know, I mean, my mm. son grew up on hydrosols and essential oils, you know, it's his go to that he feels resonates with him. So yeah. That's my dream. My dream is that all the children <laughs> grow up with essential oils, that they turn to the plants first. They don't even think about some bottle full of, uh, you know, FD and C, FD and C <laughs> dye number five, red, whatever, with uh, poison in it. Yeah. I mean, I had no education when my kid was um, an infant. I, I definitely gave him Tylenol because I was married. I was married to a doctor and I, I love this man still. We're the best of friends, but neither one of us really knew. And now were I to address a fever, oh my God, I would do it totally differently. Peppermint, spearmint, lavender, even copaiba. I would, I would so, I, I was, I would address it so differently. I'm like, ah, uh, so now I just get to teach my friends who have infants, um, what to do and how to do it, which is nice. Awesome. Um, the, the course, aromatic medicine. I am so thrilled to take this course. I can't wait for it. I'm going to be sharing it with my community. We are going to have a beautiful uh, discounted special rate for our community. Talk to us about the origins and the structure 
of this course and how it works. So, um, do you know, I'm a traditionally trained aromatherapist within the English model, so with massage, but over the years I've studied quite a bit herbal medicine. Um, I even did one my first year for my master's at uh, higher education for herbal medicine. And so, like, the herbal world's always, you know, drawn me. And one of the things I learned maybe five or six years ago were this was this concept called Western Herbal Energetics. And this was taught by a herbalist named Jim McDonald. And just participating or being present in his class, and then I've taken subsequent classes with various teachers about herbal energetics, um, it just like suddenly dawned on me because um, it was kind of concur- concurrent with what was happening in the aromatherapy field, which is kind of, you know, suddenly there was so much emphasis on chemistry and on pathology and on, um, it was almost as if you did, if you didn't know the chemistry, you, you couldn't be a useful aromatherapist. And I was like, this is crazy. Do you know? I mean, chemistry is a part of my knowledge, but it doesn't lead me. And so the energetics and pathology doesn't lead me either. So Western uh, herbal energetics is what our new aromatic medicine course is based on. And this kind of fits into our model as a school on health that we referred to earlier. So Western herbal energetics is a system of looking at what's happening in our bodies in terms of what's called six tissue states. So we can have excess dryness. Do you know, we all know when we have a dry cough versus a moist cough. We know when we have dry skin. And so we, we begin to see, you know, the different states. So we have dry moist, which would be the opposite of dryness, too much moisture. And we can hear that when, you know, someone has like a lung infection or there's just, you know, when they cough and you can hear all that gurgling in their lungs, that's excess moisture or stagnation. Mm. Um, then we have uh, laxity when the tissues lax. So, uh, you know, or, or, uh, laxity would be like hemorrhoids. You know, the, the tissue has, has, has grown lax and we need to astringe it. Or um, tension, you know, when there's tension in the body. So the opposite of laxity is tension. Right. And then we have um, irritation or heat and cold. So when we begin to look at the the body more like, and, and we know when the body's overheated, you know, it could be inflammation and it could be diarrhea, you know, versus cold. A cold condition could be poor circulation. It could be um, that they just run cold, their skin is cold. And so what the Western uh, energetics will give to us is an ability to look at physiologically what's happening with someone or look at our health in a way that's not pathology driven, oh, I have this condition or I have bronchitis, but rather there's too much moisture or there's stagnation in my lungs that I'm going to use eucalyptus for its ability to to expel that stagnation, to expel the excess mucus in that that's happening there right now versus you know, treating bronchitis. This helps all of us, even, you know, wellness consultants and anyone really working with essential oils. It takes us out of this chemistry, disease-based approach into this homeostatic, you know, how can the essential oils support the body in eliminating the excess mucus? How can essential oils support the body in, in releasing tension? So the aromatic medicine course will guide you through these um, tissue states, as they're called. There's six tissue states and giving you a new language beyond pathology based, um, you know, which I know has a lot to do with compliance as well. So it gives us the ability to look at the human body and ourselves within that holistic paradigm we were talking about versus, you know, so we are beginning to understand and look at what's happening inside ourselves, not as a pathology, but rather as an imbalance we need to hopefully, if we can, correct. Do you know some chronic diseases will be just that, chronic diseases. It's not about getting rid of them, but about increasing the quality of life and reducing symptoms. So, you know, I think this model works 
it just gives us another framework outside of this very chemistry, a biomedical approach that aromatherapy seems to have embraced over the last few years. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm actually really, really relieved and intrigued by this uh, explanation. So rather than seeing, just to sort of summarize, rather than seeing pathology or disease, you're looking at it as we're going to prioritize homeostasis or balance via an understanding of all these tissue states and how to mitigate imbalance. Correct. Using essential oils. Using essential oils. It's such a relief. Wow. <laughs> Just wow. I, I thank you. <laughs> it it helps. I it almost I I feel I have a better relationship with my body now yeah. that I'm not pathologizing everything. Yes. You know, so yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Pathologizing. I have uh, three questions that I ask every guest. And then we'll get into anything else that we need to add here. The first is what in your life or in the larger, broader world around you needs healing right now? Good question. I have been working on that. Um, Believe it or not, as, as well known and as, as accomplished as my career has been, yeah. um, being confident in myself is something I'm, I'm working on. Well, thanks for saying it because everyone else <laughs> feels the same damn way and I'm actually relieved <laughs> to hear you say that. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're Big human. <laughs> Welcome to humanity, people. If you're feeling the same way, guess what? So are it's all of us. It's been the past few nights I've been going, I mean, it's like, you know, we kind of sit in bed and read at night. And I was talking to my husband. I said, you know, every day it's like I, I, I have to work and remind myself that what I have to offer is a value. So Bless you. Bless I think you. all of us could, yeah, could use a little of that. And I am sure that my listener is actually very grateful and is actually struggling with the precise same thing as I do. Um, my struggle is actually in the morning, funnily enough. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, okay, I can do this. And I don't have any pro trouble getting out of bed, but I'm always like, does it matter? Does it really matter, any of it? And then I, I'm reminded that it does. Such a beautiful... Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Elena, you're doing so much beautiful work. It is absolutely valuable. Bless. Yeah. Thank you. I The feeling is very mutual. Thank you. The second question is, what is your favorite view? Some people take this very macro. Some people take it very micro. Mine is like the back of my son's neck. You know, um, some people are talking about the Amalfi Coast. What's your favorite view? You know, I was just in Ireland um, this past, uh, when did we go? May, mm. um, where we were staying in uh, Glen, Glen, Glen Gareth. There was, um, it's from this book uh, Sharon Blackie wrote called If Women Rose Rooted. And it's about the this place where the land kind of juts out and there is this enormous rock you can walk on and with plants kind of, you know, the plants that can grow there. And just outside of that are seals. Oh, and the seals, I don't know, there's, you know, there's the story of the Selkie about, and, and I see us humans like that, the Selkie, you know, you can take off and remove a skin and get a new skin. So that view of the water and the rocks, and there were two seals there. Um, if I think if there's a, that image that just makes me feel like, yes, you know, that would be one, but also my son sleeping. I love walking into his room and, and just looking at his innocent face sleeping. Those would be my two favorite views. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I like the idea of uh, picking a place, you know, yeah. and, and sort of transporting myself there when someone talks about it. And the third question is, what does prayer mean to you? 
prayer means connecting to something larger than myself and allowing it to speak somehow to me or through me um, mm. without asking for anything specific. Prayer, I always feel like when I'm praying, I'm praying for the best possible experience or outcome, mm. but always something larger than myself. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's wrap with the course. I'm going to suggest that this particular uh, course is perfect for both someone who's very, very interested in essential oils, and someone who's actually never been exposed to essential oils ever, but is interested in the possibility of welcoming the oils into let's say your life, your home, your family, your, your healing routines. Would that be accurate? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. It can help at every stage of one's learning to, to honor one's own relationship with the essential oils, but also expand your knowledge into how to use them effectively for yourself, for your family. And of course, if you're a practitioner in your practice, yes. Okay. Yes. Anyhow. I think that's perfect. That's, that's actually perfect. With this course, folks are going to get, uh, we're looking at module one, but this will be eventually a certificate course that people will attain by taking it, correct? Correct. It is a certification course. And do you know, I wanted to say like, it, it might be a, not a challenge, but do you know, to, to be willing to learn and to see things differently than sometimes maybe social media puts it out yeah. there or whatever yeah. is a part of our, even, do you know, there's so much of uh, fear around essential oils, you know, that people put out there as if, so this course is going to take a different perspective where we're, we really start off with, you know, essential oils are safe. Yeah. <laughs> instead, of, instead of taking this uh, fear-based approach, I believe regardless of where you're at in your essential oil journey, mm -hmm. this course will kind of reconnect you with the truth of the matter, which is essential oils are safe with the caveat is that you have some type of interest in learning more about them yes. and how to effectively use them for yourself, your family, and your clients, um, depending on where you're at. So, yes. Perfect. And I can say for myself for sure that in every room of my home, there is a collection of oils that will help me to take care of myself in that room, the kitchen, the loo, the living room, the office space, <laughs> um, everywhere. And I, I can't say enough about the most practical uses going from blemishes to digestion to cleaning in the kitchen. For yeah. those of you that aren't familiar with the oils, um, it is, it's been the greatest blessing and it's also saving me money because I'm no longer needing to go out and purchase all of those, first of all, plastic bottles of cleaners. I have one glass right. spray bottle um, and I can sort of handle almost everything with that. And the rest of it, I mean, to have a bottle of geranium, if I had to say one thing for my face, it would be geranium to heal mm -hmm. blemishes. And I know that the word healing is not necessarily compliant, but I will say to support the um, resolution of a blemish, geranium is the rock. <laughs> like, <laughs> in case you wanted to walk away with one piece of practical advice, get your geranium. Um, exactly. uh, vetiver and lavender for sleep. Well, and I think you bring up a good yes. point that, you know, we need to move away from this, you know, both for compliance and I think just even for the practice away from that language of we're treating disease. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah. It's supporting resolutions. 
Supporting, exactly, supporting, and that's what I think this course is going to empower people, mm -hmm. you know, regardless of where you're at in your journey with essential oils, it's going to empower you to understand how to use them effectively and safely, do you know, like, yeah. so, yeah. yeah. I can't thank you enough for being here with me, Jade. It's been such a pleasure. I so look forward to finally collaborating and making this real. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And we'll be in touch. We'll talk again soon. And I look forward to welcoming you back on the podcast for more sort of granular topics. I think this is a worthwhile endeavor to every now and again, sprinkle in a little bit of aromatherapy wisdom with Jade when we can. I, I would love that. I would love that too. Thank you very much. You're Elena. welcome. And thank you so much for listening. Mm -hmm.